Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome everyone to Book Review. Today we have a very exciting book. As you all know, the Islamic State that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam formed in Medina was the oldest example of a political society formed into a state. The Prophet, peace be upon him, organized and established an Islamic State in only 13 years. After the Prophet's death, alayhi salatu wasalam, this Islamic State evolved and grew to be a state that is one of the strongest in the world. Today's book is on the political system of the Islamic State by Dr. Muhammad Salim al -Awa. Joining me today is a very special person, Dr. Saeed Faris. Dr. Saeed Faris is the lecturer in the Islamic Department in Al-Azhar University, Faculty of Languages and Translation. Professor Dr. Saeed Faris, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining me today. Jazakallahu um, khairan. Uh, professor, uh, at the start of this episode, I would like you to give us a brief about the author, Dr. Muhammad Salim al -Awwa. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Salim al Awa is a well uh, known person in the, uh, in the circles of, of Muslim intellectuals here in Egypt. And he got his uh, law degree actually from the, uh, the University of Alexandria in 1919. Uh, 19, I, I, let me just call it 1963. Mm. And he got his PhD from London University in 1972. And uh, his main works, you know, revolve around uh, Islam and, you know, the system, political systems of Islam and the reformism. Actually, the, you know, the question of reform in Islam, he's very interested in that question. So it's his area of speciality? Yes, sure. Okay. About the book, uh, this book is, I think, one of the only books that discusses, recent books, I mean, that discusses this issue. Can you expand on that? Uh, like uh, the other publications in this area, do, I, I, in the, as far as I know, there are no other publications um, in this area in the recent times. Or do you have uh, something else that you want to share with us? No, actually there are a couple of books about, about this issue written in recent times. But the, the, the thing about Dr. Alawa's book here, uh, that he is, he is not going into the two extremes because what you have now you have you know people who are uh, taking the extreme of liberalism and saying that there is no Islamic state you can't have an Islamic state in our modern times and on the other hand you have people who are for Islamic state purely Islamic state and they say that the, the system of Khilafah it should be the only system that is uh, eligible for our present time. Mm. Dr. Salim Al-Awa he's taking some uh, the middle way by showing us that you can have now, an Islamic State in our modern times, following the dictates of our times and the, uh, the you know, that it fits. So he's uh, taking a middle path. He's taking a middle path. Between the liberal uh, way of thinking and um, the, uh, what, 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 else, literal, what else did you say? The literalist way of okay. thinking. Yeah. Okay, they, they um, say that no Islamic State can be established um, in general. That's the liberal way. And the other way, they say that uh, they want an Islamic state that is? Uh, they want an Islamic state that is, uh, you know, the Khilafah system. They consider that the Khilafah system is. So, what does Dr. Muhammad Salim al Awa say in this book? I think he says the same. Uh, not exactly as many people would argue here because mm. actually in his book he's making the distinction between you know three three trends you have the positive trend and you have the negative trend and you have the middle path trend mm -hmm. so the positive the negative trend those who are uh, who are calling for the establishment of of the uh, of an Islamic state as it was during the first you know centuries mm. with the same rules with the same regulations with the same everything and they don't, uh, they don't, they do not adapt this or they do not try to take this into and uh, also apply this into our modern times. Mm -hmm. So this is one way. And the, the, other, the other possibility is that you try, you disconnect between, you know, the, the Islamic history or the Islamic tradition, Islamic heritage and, 
you know, the present time. You so say can we say they refuse technology, for example, they're saying we want an Islamic state that was, uh, is the, just the same uh, copy of the Islamic state before um, and don't uh, uh, take the technology and we don't want to take uh, all the uh, t technologies and all the, um, all the uh, established uh, uh, culture. No, no, we're not talking here about technology. We're talking about the political organization of the state. Okay. Okay. So we're talking here about about the, the you know the existence of a of a Khalifa and the way the Khalifa will be selected and you know the Shura Council and you know elements like that. Mm. You know the point of Dr. Al Awa here is saying that okay, we good we want to look to the values, mm. not to the names. Mm. Okay. So let's go and check the values. Mm -hmm. What what are the values of an Islamic State. Mm -hmm. These values are represented in the Shura. Yes, definitely the Shura. But what do you mean by the Shura here? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you mean the same way that, for example, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was selected as a caliph? Mm -hmm. No. If you go to the to the way that uh, that the uh, the caliph was chosen, you have four caliphs, the four rightly guided caliphs, uh -huh. who are chosen in four different ways. So okay, this is what tells you. us. It tells us that you know you have the concept, but the application of that concept should be. Uh, should be adapted to our time mm -hmm. okay i get your point uh, excellent point uh let's now talk about uh the book uh, the book uh, starts by discussing the islamic state before islam uh, the islamic state uh, the, i mean i mean the state before islam the state uh, in the arabian peninsula before islam how was that okay this is a very interesting point because uh, the way he started his his book is very is very very mm -hmm. interesting why Okay, because if you want to talk about the state, there are certain factors, certain elements to say that you have a state here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of these elements were that, you know, you have a territory, you okay. have a homeland, okay? Before Islam, we had the Bedouins and, you know, the Hadar, the settled mm -hmm. people living in towns, okay? Do they belong to a homeland? The Bedouins, of course, no. Okay. But, the, you know, the settled people, they have a homeland, they have a place, they have a territory that they live in and they occupy and they enjoy, the, you know, you know, the living there. So this is an element. The second element is to have what? Is to have, you know, a conscious of collectivity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to feel that you are a collective group of people mm. serving or, you know, working for the, for the, for the welfare of the community. Okay. okay. The third element is that you have a political organization, a political authority. Okay. Okay. And then also the rule of law. If you apply these four elements on the society before Islam, then you won't have really a political organization of the society. You okay. won't have a state. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and if you look to, like, for example, the, the you know the the community of Quraysh, they had a sort of organization. Mm. They had sort of, you know, people or certain tribes are responsible for, you know, for different things. You have certain tribe responsible for the Siqaya, another responsible for the Ifada. Okay, but these are all religious functions of okay. these groups, not political organization. There was no political organization in the modern sense of okay. the word. The Islamic State started by the Hijrah of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu to Medina. Uh, from there, the, st the Islamic State started evolving, growing, and developing. Um, can you s tell us a little bit about this very important part of the book? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, this is an important point in the history of Islamic tradition, of Islamic political tradition as a whole, because once the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, uh, he started, now, now we have a territory. We have been talking about territory and rule of law and in uh, collective, you know, conscious of collectivity. Now here you have a homeland, you have a territory, you have a place that you belong to, that you care for, that you are attached to. So once you have this place, you start uh, yes, you start thinking about how you're going to organize that place. Of course, this organization includes political organization, social organization, economic organization. And here comes, you know, the, you know, that story in Medina, the constitution of Medina. At that moment, the Prophet ﷺ started regulating the Muslims' life in Medina. And when you look at the constitution of Medina, there are different elements there that will tell you that this is the moment that the idea of an Islamic state started. Mm -hmm. There you have, uh, for example, you know, the reference for the Ummah. Uh, who, who are the people of this It um started from there. You said political, economical. 
on what basis were these political and economical establishment that the Prophet ﷺ established um, on the Sharia, on the Sunnah, and on what else? Okay, wonderful. Now, don't forget that at the time you have the Prophet وسلم, and he receives Wahy. Okay. So here at the at that moment, now you have the Quran with the general basis that you know that it was revealed hmm. in it. Okay, and then you have the Prophet وسلم, affirming and confirming these general bases, hmm. but at the same time there are particulars that are related to his time and place. What so are these? The particulars? Mm -hmm. Okay, for example, at the time you have, uh, like, uh, you know, when he was asked about the, the you know, the bomb trees, mm -hmm. okay, and then he gave his opinion, mm -hmm. okay, so he gave his opinion based on, on his own experience, okay, his own, uh, you know, opinion, but, you know, after that, he was asked about that, he said, he told them what, told them, you know, you know better than me in the in so you of mean life. the Islamic State was based on the revelation, the revelation, uh, the political system, the economical system was all established in Medina based on the revelation. From there, it started, and then how did it develop? Okay, and he did it develop during the Prophet Ali uh, life or after it? Okay, here you are talking about systems. What do you mean by, word, by the word system here? Let's I mean it's answer the first question and then uh, we will go to a short break and after the break we'll continue the, uh, the time where this evolved and uh, whether it's before or after the Prophet Isa son death. Okay, we're talking about a social system, a political system. Okay. Okay, what do you mean by a system here? Because the word system is kind of a very, uh, you know, it's a very, uh, subtle term mm. okay there were principles okay. general principles if we're talking about supreme values mm -hmm. that are established in the quran that mm -hmm. are established in the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu if we're talking about this and we refer to this as a system of values okay yes we do have values there okay so these values were established during the prophet alayhi life and they developed afterwards we will continue on this point after the break Dear brothers and sisters, we are going to a short break. And after the break, stay tuned to Book Review. <laughs> Welcome back, dear brothers and sisters. On the political system of the Islamic State is our, is our book for today. Welcome back, Dr. Saeed. We stopped at the evolving of the Islamic State and the development of it. It started during the life of the Prophet ﷺ, during the Medina period, and it grew afterwards. So tell us more about its growth. How did it develop? Prophet ﷺ based the state on the revelation, on the Quran, on the Sunnah, and after his death, ﷺ, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali, Khulafa Rashidin developed that. How was the development? And we want to know how did Abu Bakr start this development? Okay. Uh, okay, now after the you know the death of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now you have a, a, you know a very critical moment in the history of the Muslim nation. You need to choose, you know, a leader for that community. Who, who should be that leader? Hmm. This is the, this was the first question asked, and this was the first you know, you know, critical uh, you know thing that people were very concerned with at the time. Hmm. That's why you see the Ansar going to the Saqifid Bani Sa'ida, coming you know, discussing the question there even before the Saqifid Bani Sa'ida. Saqifid Bani hmm. Sa'ida. What is that? Saqifid Bani Sa'ida is the place where the Ansars, where the people of Medina used to gather and discuss the affairs of the society, you know, before So this Islam. was the basis of Shura, I think? Uh, this was a place where they used to come, yes, and discuss, and then develop a specific, you know, and a collective opinion about a certain issue, yes. Okay. So you can say that you, they have a Shura. It was sort of a Shura meeting mm -hmm. that if we can uh, call it that, you know, we, okay. if, can, if we can use that term there, okay? So here you have Abu Bakr Siddiq going there and 
Umar ibn Khattab with him and uh, Ubaida, I believe, also was with them. So you have the people, three from the Muhajirun and the, also the Ansar from uh, Aus and the Khazraj. Okay. They are meeting there to discuss that question. Now, the point, here you have the, this critical question, okay? And then they had, you know, a, a long debate that... So this was the start of the Shura during Abu Bakr's Khilafah. Started the principle of the Shura, which was one of the most essential principles that the Islamic political system is based on. Um, we want to talk about other principles, that the development of other principles during the uh, Abu Bakr's Khilafa, and we will start from this point to move on to Omar and then Uthman and then Ali. Okay. I mean, if you, if you, if you are talking here about historical events, there are many, many historical events that happened during the, the caliphate time that would tell us that there is a state there, mm. that there is, an, that there is the, 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 you know, the nucleus of an Islamic state is growing mm. there. So you have the question of shura, as you, as you just said now. Like any state should have income, should have um, exp expenses, and should have um, ways to establish the, the, the economical system and to defend the state. So this was all established during the Prophet Ali Salaam, and it grew during Abu Bakr's period and Umar's and Uthman's, and then afterwards, of course. Um, during the uh, period of Abu Bakr, which was very short, there was a growth in the Islamic State. It grew more during Umar's uh, period of Khilafah. Uh, like, what, what, but this growth, how did it go and evolve? That's my uh, point here that we want to share with our viewers i mean i mean uh, here we may look at you know at the judicial system for example for the judicial system you have abu Bakr and omar after him now they started to choose you know judges mm -hmm. they started to choose muftis here and there they started to to send mm -hmm. judges to different you know to different places to different cities mm -hmm. of the muslim you know uh, of the muslim cities mm -hmm. okay and then you have the question of the construction of mosques and mes and the schools mm -hmm. you have the question of dawawin umar al khattab and the mm -hmm. question of dawawin writing you know the registers making registers of the of, you know of the state mm -hmm. and you know the uh, the organization of the different governorates or the different mm -hmm. you know cities now mm -hmm. you are you have you know you, you know a city center in kufa or in basra or in sham so these were all parts of the creation mm. of a system of an Islamic state. Okay, but the ministries were established during Omar's period. Uh, I mean, it 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 it, it, it grew. Mm -hmm. Abu Bakr started, mm -hmm. but Omar, you know, set set the frame for it, mm -hmm. for it, and he sent many many people to different, you know, he he assigned. You know the judges. He assigns mm -hmm. the wallahs. He assigned, you know, the collectors of zakah. He assigned, you know. Uh, uh, he created what we may call a political organization mm. of the state. Okay, uh, excellent point. Uh, in the book, the author discusses five principles that the Islamic political state was based on. Mm -hmm. He's, he talks about justice, freedom, equality, and he mentions uh, two others. We want to discuss each principle uh, in brief. Okay, wonderful. So let's start by the Shura, okay. the concept of Shura first. The concept of Shura is started by arguing, the author started by arguing, by arguing that the Shura is mentioned twice in the Quran. And when you look at, the, at these two verses in the Quran, you will find that the first verse, وَشَّاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ and mm. consult them in the first, it means that the Shura is mandatory. Okay. So it's an obligation upon the you know, the, the one in charge of the Muslim affairs, you know, to follow and to adopt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the, in, this, in the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prays the shura. Mm. Okay, so if we put these two verses together, we can reach into the mandatory, uh, you know, uh, obligation mm. of that aspect. And we can see that aspect in, in different instances in the history of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also during Umar bin Khattab, during Abu Bakr Siddiq, we can see the application of the principle in reality. Mm. And now here, the question is, now you have the principle, you have the concept of Shura, mm. okay? But what was the scope of that concept? How are you gonna regulate that concept, mm. okay? 
and this is the main point of his argument here mm. okay because the concept is there the concept is mentioned in the quran the concept is mentioned in the prophet's tradition as well but now how it was practiced during for example the choice of the caliph okay mm. it was practiced in four different ways for four different caliphs I get okay your point. so the scope of the application uh, or the way of the application of the concept differs based on the time mm. based on the place based on the urgencies of the mm. ummah at the time and that's the approach of the author and this is the approach of the author exactly okay and the scope what is the scope okay it's open the scope is open there is no limitation for that you don't mm. only ask you don't you don't only consult for you know the caliph or okay. for for seeking a president no you consult in all the affairs of the community okay, okay? it's not only one thing now now very very important point now okay now you have the shura and you sought for the shura and you have the Shura Council, but again, how you form the Shura Council? Who are those people to be chosen? You don't know. It's again left. These details of the concept are left to the people of that moment to decide. Mm. Okay? Now, now you had the Council, the Shura Council. Mm. Okay? And they reached the position. Is it obligatory? upon the head of the state to follow that mm. or not. Mm. Here he's saying that you have two positions of the scholars. You have the position of the scholars who say, yes, it's obligatory. And you have the other position who says, no, it's not. He should work, you know, he should consult them, but then works to the best of his own discretion. Okay. Okay. Of course, uh, the, the, of course the, the author here argues for the first position mm. that it's mandatory. Mm. Otherwise, there is no point of seeking the shura itself. Mm. Okay. So this is, uh, this is about the concept of shura. Justice. Justice, justice, justice is this important uh, and significant element in the establishment of the state. Mm. Okay, you cannot have a political organization without having this concept of justice. Mm. And when Islam came, Islam, you know, formulated a new concept of justice. Mm. Okay, because justice before that were just you know, it depends, mm. as we say, it depends. If you are, if you are, the, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the head of the tribe, mm. then the concept for justice for you is different mm. from if you are a slave. If you are a master, it's different from being, you know, you know, an ordinary person. So Islam came and made a revolution concerning the concept of justice. He, uh, uh, here, we see. So if you hate people, that doesn't mean that you do them injustice. Mm. No, you should keep injustice even with the enemy, even with those people you may hate. Mm. So here it's a kind of like a revolution concept. And to take that concept and make it a principle in the state, this is again, you know, a, you know, a, a, you know as I said, a revolution mm. that wasn't there in earlier Professor Saeed, let, let's move on to the third principle uh, on which the Islamic State should be built, which is freedom. Uh, I'm afraid we're running out of time. We want to go through the third and fourth and fifth, inshallah, really fast. So okay. let's talk about freedom and then equality and then uh, putting the head of state to account. Okay. Okay. Uh, as for freedom, freedom is, is one of the most difficult things here because freedom, you are talking about political authority, and the political authority always tries to control freedom of the people. Okay. That's why it's very hard to define freedom. We have different contested definitions for freedom. We have freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of, of, of religion. And Islam established the freedom in all its different types. You have a freedom of choice, you have the freedom of thought, you have a freedom of religion. Even in, in order to become a Muslim, okay, لا يكراها في الدين, there is no compulsion in religion. So you have the right, you know, to to be free in choosing your religion. There is no compulsion in religion. So if there is freedom in choosing your religion, definitely there has to be freedom in choosing anything else or saying whatever you want to do or whatever you want to say. The only thing that is, uh, that is conditional here is that you should you know, practice your freedom, but without approaching the freedoms of others or disobeying the, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So this is like, this is for freedom. If we move quickly for equality, 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 you know, got established 
only after modernity and after the French Revolution here, you have these old declarations of human rights and you're talking about equality. But if you go to Islam, if you go to the values of Islam there, you see equality at its, you know, best form, the ultimate form of equality there from day one in Islam. So you have the equality there. And then uh, again to, to end for the last for the last element or for the last value is to, uh, is to put the head of state into accountability, mm -hmm. the accountability of the head of state. Again, this, this is a modern notion. And if you look to the different constitutions of different states, you'll find a constitution that doesn't allow the, you know, to, to put the president into accountability. There are others who are arguing for only high treason. When there is a high treason, then you put him to, into uh, you know, accountability. But in Islam, again, from day one, the ruler is accountable for all his actions, whether it has to do with high treason, whether it has to do with common offenses. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for everything you do in your life. It doesn't matter if you are president, it doesn't matter if you are you know, the director or manager or just an employee or just a man. So here you have these supreme values coming together in, in making that one wonderful uh, you know, uh, constitution of a state the trans according to the values established in the Quran. And here comes the word Islamic. Islamic comes from these main principles and values that are divine. And again, this is the huge difference between other states and Islamic states, because we say, okay, we can go for democratic state, but not only for purely democratic state, mm. because we have a divine element in our tradition mm. and our heritage that we need to add to that way of thinking mm. and this and this is actually the main point of his argument mm. okay not only purely this is the things. conclusion this is the conclusion mm. not only purely democratic state or only purely that state or, or that state you have the, the islamicity of the state the concept of islamicity of the state and this islamicity comes from the divine element in it and the divine element comes from the application of the supreme values of the high values of that religion mm. into our lives uh, just to, 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 to conclude, Islamic State is based on two elements. The elements of maintaining the religion mm. and the element of you know, people's interests, mm. to protecting people's interests. And these are, these are the two elements that are on equal footing. Don't say this precedes this or that precedes that. No, you're both on the same equal footing. So you, as an Islamic State, should keep both into perspective and try to adhere to both. Uh, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you very much uh, for your time, uh, Professor uh, Saeed Faris, the lecturer in the Islamic Studies Department, Faculty of Languages and Translation, Al Azhar University. Thank you very much for thank your you time. Very much welcome. Very much uh, thank, thank you too, dear brothers and sisters. Uh, this was a very important book that we recommend for all of you to read. And uh, inshallah, the next time we have a new book and in a new area inshallah so uh, watch this episode inshallah and till the next time i leave you in the care of allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh